Hi guys, what you're looking at is an R200 snout in an E30K frame. Right, we have a bit of an issue. This is a Spicer 1310 Uni cup, which will bolt to the diff. Hold on. But it hits on the fuel tank. And the diff actually sits too high in the K-frame, needs to be lowered a little bit so it clears everything a little bit better. It's about, uh, up the top is about 6 mil, down the bottom is about 10, so I'll lower it a little. It's bolted in with these. So this is an S15R200 Torsen. Oh, Torsen's alright for a street car, but Torsen's definitely not good for a circuit car. You lift a wheel, it'll open. This car was also recommended to go very low on the beam because they were considering going quite low. E30s don't have to be low to handle. It's been proven that an E30 just off standard height will handle just as good if the spring rates, sway bars and everything else suit. So what we will do is I'm going to pull the Delrins out and I'm going to drop the subframe back into its original position, which will allow us to have more negative camber because this car is tarmac that'll get used on the circuit and hill climbs. So tarmac rally, yeah, we need a little bit more negative and a little bit more control out of these offset bolts. So we will actually, oh wow. We will pull this beam out and we will have a really good look and go from there. And we will work out... And there was something I did find. Now, there's no real way to get a spanner in here. Look at this. You can't really notice it, but this is where the nuts sit. And there's no real way to get a spanner in to do it up. So I will trim the lip off the K-frame and I'll tig it up right on the edge and I'll clean that up and then that'll give us enough room to get a spanner in there to actually do the tail shaft bolts up properly. I'll put a spacer in between the diff ear and the K-frame and that's it. There's only two bolts that hold this diff in at the front and two bolts at the rear. All right, this is the Brintec kit. So I will have a play and see where we can get it sitting. And then I'll work out whether or not I put the back of the diff down or put the back of the leave the back of the diff up. I'm probably going to leave the back of the diff up and I'll get a half decent pinion angle on it then. Because pinion angle also matters. But yeah, we're running a 1310 uni on the rear, which is what all the all the Nissan's, Nissan guys when they build a built tail shaft seem to go to these. And the 1310 uni is what you'd run on a 350 horsepower up to 500 horsepower streetcar with our big slicks. So we should have a nice service, serviceable universal in the rear. I'll build a whole tail shaft from here. We have, uh, hold on a second. We have down pipes. Yeah. They're ready to go on. Uh, I'm doing some other stuff as well, but yeah. So the whole rear end, uh, got the muffler full three inch exhaust, three inch rezzo. The whole rear end has got to come out now. It's a bit of a pain in the ass, but I had to pull brakes off anyway and trim up the rear backing plates. There's a bunch of little stuff to do. Once we raise the subframe, the spring should actually be closer maybe to the height and it should go down a tad, but still not enough. We need about an inch lower on the rear, half an inch, oh, probably about 20 mil I think we need to lower on the rear it was a little high so yeah I'll pull it all out I'll take some photos one thing I did notice whilst I was under here was we can't get the CV out in the car <laughs> with the diff in the CV no matter what you do it has a little wait, let's see if we can see it see that has that the CV won't come past the CV cup so now, now I've got to drop the diff out just to get the CVs out. <laughs> yeah, 
update for the week. So I'll get all this out, I'll trim it all up, I'll clean it all up, take some photos, uh, take a video as I put it all back in. So yeah. And then once the tail shaft's done, I will finish this single three inch exhaust. Thanks guys, thanks for watching as always. Yeah, that's today's update.